Um, hello everyone, my name is Shikhar Srivastav. Uh, today I'll be talking about no mean feat, that is upgrading a customized solar to upstream solar. Uh, starting with who am I? Uh, I'm a software engineer at the New Search infrastructure team at Bloomberg based in their London office. Uh, we use Apache Solar to provide search functionality to the news product. Uh, just a very quick recap of what Apache Solar is. I'm sure all of you might already know about this. Uh, it's an op open source enterprise search engine. It's based on another open source library called Apache Lucene, uh, which is primarily an indexing and search Java library. Uh, Solar is a layer on top of Lucene uh, to provide an enterprise-ready distributed scalable uh, platforms of Lucene Core, which is essentially Solar. And then uh, it's an enterprise-grade search engine. Uh, so Apache Solar at Bloomberg. Uh, we have been uh, using Apache Lucene for quite some time. Uh, but we actually started investing quite heavily back in 2012. Uh, we have a few uh, committers as well as PMC members in the Apache Lucene product, uh, project who work at Bloomberg. And we have around uh, 100 applications that use Solar internally uh, for the search needs. Uh, and it's provided as search as a service. Uh, we also had a talk on uh, how that is done in ECIR 2023. So if anyone of you is interested, you can uh, also take a look at that. Uh, just to give you a brief idea of the scale of the data. Uh, so we at New Search, uh, we serve around 22 million queries every day. Uh, the median latency for those queries is around 90 milliseconds. And the volume, uh, we get around 2.2 million search uh, news stories every day, uh, which again, uh, at peak times, it's 300 stories per second. Uh, we have around 750 million stories in our index. And that's replicated across uh, multiple machines to 126 terabytes. Uh, so yeah, that's actually quite important for this talk. Now, what is this talk about, right? So this talk is uh, basically about how to upgrade a customized solar to the upstream solar, right? And upgrading is uh, not always easy, and especially for search and information retrieval systems, uh, which have very diverse set of queries. Uh, it's actually a hard task. And given the scale of data that we operate on and the number of users uh, that we serve, uh, it was a challenging task for us. And this talk is about the process that we followed to uh, do the migration. And if anyone of you is in a similar situation, maybe some of our learnings can be useful for you as well. Uh, so yeah, just quickly why you should upgrade, because sometimes there's a sort of a struggle between product teams and infrastructure teams, like you know, if everything is working fine, what's the point of upgrade? Uh, so I would like to emphasize upgrading periodically is very important, because it gives you bug fixes, security fixes, performance boost, as well as new features. And these new features you can leverage to uh, you know, be more competitive in the market. You can uh, help uh, build trust between you and your uh, customers. And periodic upgrade also makes future upgrade much more easier. Now, quickly, why was it difficult for us specifically? Uh, you can see on the right-hand side, there's a high-level overview of our search system. Uh, we had the old Apache Solar, some custom code into it, and then we had our ingestion search services as well as some scripts, you know, all of which were quite tightly coupled with these customizations, right? And in order to change uh, the heart of the system, uh, you had to make sure that you know nothing breaks because uh, you have to deliver this change transparently to all of the users. No users should be, uh, you know, yeah, no, no user should be affected by uh, the upgrade that you're doing behind the scenes. And like I said, because we serve. Uh, lot of news on a very large scale, uh, which is also quite diverse. Uh, the schema that we have is also quite diverse. The queries that we have is also quite diverse. And just the sheer scale of number of queries and the infrastructure that we have uh, makes moving the heart of the system uh, to a newer version uh, quite a difficult task. Now, this talk is divided into three phases. Uh, what we did pre-migration, what we did during the migration, and what we did after the migration. Uh, pre-migration is mostly about planning and choosing the right version. Uh, before actually upgrading, you need to know what version you should move to. Uh, and you should really ask some questions uh, to yourself. Will the new version serve all of my use cases? Is the new version stable? Uh, does it perform better for me? Because yeah, most of the times, newer upgrades, uh, they do perform better. But if you're using some niche uh, feature, it might be the case that maybe it's not performing better, right? And also, how easy or difficult it might be to migrate to other future versions. Should you wait for the next major release, or you should just migrate to this minor one? So yeah, those are some questions that you should ask. And then once you decided on the version, the next step is to create a plan. Uh, the reason it's important is because this entire effort might take some time. 
It did take some time for us. Uh, you should ask yourself, what is the cost of migrating? What is the cost of not migrating, right? And then on a high level, what are the changes that you need to make? Also, it's important and useful to set up some SLOs and SLIs for the existing system, because you can use those for uh, comparison with the new system. And I think it's very, very important to set up milestones so that you can incrementally make changes, uh, implement them, deploy them, and stay motivated throughout this process. Um, so yeah, once you have a plan, here comes the actual migration. Uh, and I'll just quickly go through what we did. Uh, so we initially created a parallel setup uh, with the new version of uh, Apache Solar on the other side. And then we modified our ingestion service to serve traffic to both of these systems. Uh, it's important to make sure that the resources you provide to the new system are proportional, because maybe you do not have all of the resources uh, that you can give to the new one as well as the old one. Uh, also good idea to uh, create some performance metrics and make sure that whatever setup you have, it's easy to extend. Uh, because this is really the base of the pre-design. Whatever comes later is just the toppings. So yes, once you have the parallel setup, uh, next thing is to move out the custom code. And this was actually uh, uh, quite a challenging task for us as well, because um, you know, over the period of time, we implemented quite a lot of things uh, within Solar. And then uh, there are multiple ways uh, which you can move out the code. One way is to uh, try to see wherever you can move out that code as a plugin uh, that you can then inject via config files within Solar. Other ways could be, uh, you know, sometimes it might not be possible to move the code out this way. Uh, in those cases, you should try to think, can I upstream my custom code? Because if you implemented something, most likely there was a feature gap. And you know, if, if you can uh, contribute it back to upstream, uh, other people might use it as well. And then there might be some situations where it, it's really not possible to either move it out as a plugin or upstream it. In those cases, um, we did something what we called hooks. So uh, sometimes um, simple changes in the upstream code, like making a class uh, extensible, or maybe exposing certain function to be able to override it, it makes it possible for you to integrate things more easily. And uh, yeah, th those customizable features can also be used by other teams or other uh, people using the solar. Uh, to extend it as well. And yeah, while we were doing all of this, uh, and anyone who does all of this will have to dive too deep into the code, uh, we might find bugs. Uh, it's also a good opportunity to contribute all of these things back to the community. And on a very high level, these are some of the contributions. I'll not go into too much of the detail, because this talk is more about the process. Uh, yeah, something I can highlight is uh, integration of learning to rank in Solar was actually a part of this project. Uh, we internally first uh, created uh, learning to rank, and then we realized, you know, it's a good idea to do all of this within Solar as well. And there were parallel efforts going on across uh, the organization. Some of the examples of hooks maybe uh, are, you know, yeah, we, we just exposed a new response builder uh, to be able to override it uh, and, yeah, extend it, uh, enable the extension of uh, HTTP shard handler, which is just, again, some class. So anyways, I'll, I'll not go into too much detail. Uh, there are links to all of these. Now, uh, once you have done moving out the custom code, right, for us, like I said, uh, the services were quite tightly coupled uh, with the implementation. So the next step is to actually upgrade services. Uh, what we found really useful is feature flags. So feature flags are certain variables. It could be in memory uh, that you can assign values. And these values then decide how a service is going to behave. So we use feature flag to uh, give the power to our services to talk to both of these systems. And uh, again, it's also important to highlight whenever you make code changes like this, uh, which is not directly related to your product, it's a good idea to keep all of this implementation modularized and document them properly, because you're actually altering the behavior of your services. Now, OK, once our services had the power to talk to both of these systems, uh, the next step is to verify if the quality of the new system is the same, right? Uh, and like I said, it's actually quite difficult to perform exhaustive checks, because uh, just the sheer diversity of queries and the way they are made um, is massive. right? Uh, so what we did is, based on our understanding of the product and talking to the clients and also you know, talking to other people in the community, uh, we narrowed down uh, certain requests to create a test suite and then use that test suite to uh, run queries on both the systems and you know, just compare them to monitor what are the difference. 
Another pretty useful thing that we did is we modified our search service to mirror the traffic to the new system as well. Right? So now the search service can talk to both of these systems um, based on the query sent by the user. And then we would hash results from both of the systems and compare them. This way, we could organically, over a period of time, generate a data, data set. And then we could use this data set to, uh, one by one, identify you know, where are the differences in quality, and if, if that really matters or not. OK, so once uh, we figure out the differences, right? Now we have a list of things that are different. The next step is to fix those issues, like fix those things, uh, because you do not want your quality to degrade. Um, so one way to apply those fixes, obviously, is the easiest way. Go back and just fix your fork of Solar. Uh, but that would lead us back to the same problem of a lot of customized code with us. So what we did is we, uh, yeah, we basically applied uh, this mechanism. So whenever we found out an issue, uh, we would say, can we upstream it? If we can upstream it, it's always a good idea to upstream it first and then backport the changes in your fork. So this way, even though the entire process becomes a bit longer, uh, you are future proof. And also, whatever fixes that you provide, uh, whatever fixes that you come up with might also be useful for the entire community. Um, and as you go apply those fixes, uh, it's also a good idea to just incrementally add test coverage also in the open source code. Uh, so that essentially benefits everyone. One of the examples of uh, one possible fix is mentioned there. It was a null pointer exception, quite a simple one. Uh, that was also backported. OK, now once the quality checks are done, right, uh, you need to be sure that uh, the performance is fine. Because yeah, maybe the quality was good, but it's performing slow. So it's really important to understand your traffic, because a lot of times, maybe 90 95% of your queries might fall into just one category. And you really want to spend your time uh, optimizing those queries, rather than spending your effort on everything. So um, what we did in this case is, again, used feature flags to mirror our request to the new system. And then uh, the SLOs that we set up initially for the old system and performance metrics which we set up during the parallel setup of the new system, uh, we used them to compare you know, what was low, what was good. And then we realized that for us, some of the deep paging queries uh, in the new system were actually slower. Uh, but the keyword searches were three times faster. Uh, and like I said, uh, based on our traffic, uh, keyword, uh, keyword queries make a majority of the queries. And deep paging queries are really small in numbers. So we, at this point, we were like, OK, this trade-off seems fine. Uh, so we are happy with it. But these things you can only catch when you uh, do rigorous performance testing uh, between the old and the new systems. OK, so once you've done the performance testing, the next step is to actually deploy all of these things. right? Uh, and again, I would say feature flags come in very handy over here. So what we did is we rolled out uh, the new system to users incrementally. So we would say 90% queries still go to the old system, 10% goes to the new system. And then using feature flags, we incrementally transitioned all of the traffic to the new system. And yeah, I would also like to highlight that even when you transition everything to the new system, it's still a good idea to keep the old system alive and have a red button uh, to just quickly switch back things to the old system, because no matter how good you test, uh, things, bad things can happen. Right? So it's a good idea to keep both of these systems alive for some time. Now, once we are done with the deployment, uh, the final stage is post-migration. How do we retire things? Right? Uh, so the first step, obviously, is removing all of the connections between your services and the old system. And then uh, just archiving the old solar code. Now, again, I would like to highlight it's not a good idea to just delete everything. Uh, because archiving, you can still go back and look in time why you did something this way and not the other way. And then finally, remove all of the feature flags, because yeah, now they're no longer needed. Uh, and then you can take some time to uh, document the behavior of the new system, because throughout this entire process, you might have changed certain things within your services or within this entire ecosystem, uh, which you would like to document properly. And then uh, last is to actually you know, look into what this new system has to offer, and then leverage those new features to you know, just uh, make a better product altogether. So finally, there are a few takeaways uh, when I look back. Uh, yeah, it goes without saying we should avoid diverging from the upstream as much as possible. But there might be certain situations where you cannot do that. Uh, so always uh, make sure that your custom code is modularized and its interfaces with the system is clean so that when time comes, you can easily move it out uh, and you know, make it a plugin. And then also, obviously, prioritize uh, upgrading periodically, because the longer you wait, the more difficult it gets. And yeah, just keep track of new things that happen in the community so that 
you have uh, you understand clearly when is the right time to do this upgrade so that's all thank you everyone if you would like to learn more about bloomberg you can check out bloomberg.com/engineering or even talk to me uh, thank you Thanks. Thanks a lot for that. That was fantastic talk. I, I just before before the questions, I see there are many. I'll, I'll give them a microphone. My comment as a PMC member and committer of Apache Airflow. I keep on telling the people on Slack asking questions about like old versions of Airflow. Upgrade early. Upgrade often. <laughs> it's like that's repeated uh, com continuously. And something that I've learned in the past from my the best product manager I, I worked with. The more often you upgrade, the less painful it is in general quite counterintuitive, but it, it actually works. And I really loved, just to, just to stress one thing in your presentation, there was like one slide when you wrote, consider cost of migrating and not migrating. And this, the second part, is something that people keep on forgetting, that not migrating costs you a lot. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, like, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, great talk. So, a quick question. Uh, you, you showed all the different use cases for search at Bloomberg at the beginning. So is this migration you're talking about for straight news search, monitoring, or both? All of them, yes. Uh, news search as well as monitoring. So uh, our search backend is used for search as well as monitoring. How long, how long did the migration take? We're just in the middle of migrating Solar H9, so I'm curious. Oh, uh, what tip? Oh. How, long? oh, how long did it take? Yeah, for us, actually, it took quite a long, um, quite a long time because it was prioritized and deprioritized again and again. Um, yeah, it took a couple of years, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, yeah. Hi. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for your talk. Um, so you mentioned about mirroring the traffic to both systems, um, and also then evaluating it. So what kind of interleaving did you do? when you mirrored it to both systems. So did you deliver results to your end users with, let's say, interleaved results from both systems? That's how you evaluated it? No, no, no. So uh, for the quality checks, what we did is uh, we hashed the results from both of these systems within the service and then just logged the hashes, right? And just by going through the logs for past one month, you could figure out these are the different hashes and these are the queries uh, that make it different. And then you can one by one look at those queries, like why they are different. We, yeah, we did not deliver the results to the end users because, yeah, that was scary. <laughs> More questions? Uh, hi, what, what was the version difference between old, old cluster and the new cluster? Uh, the version difference between old and the new version, right? Yes. Uh, so we migrate from uh, 4. Point, yeah, 4.0 to 7.5, and it was a few years ago. It okay. was a big difference. So, so it, this wasn't a migration to the newest uh, 9 version? No, this is not uh, upgrading to the version 9. No, we have to do that again. Okay, thanks. <laughs> few years <laughs> hopefully this time hopefully this but, time it's but going you don't to be have easier. this custom version anymore like it's, it's mostly yeah. vanilla yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. standard i mean we solar. still have some custom things but they are now very cleanly separated out uh, so that they can be easily uh, migrated okay. one one last question okay no thank you very much thanks thank you. <laughs>